Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today is an update on the Roxy Journal of Stitchery. Our prompts were Christmas and Snowflake. You've already seen my Christmas tree. It was all very blingy and full of clusters. Now I haven't done a tab yet. I'm not sure where I will incorporate that yet. So I'm still thinking about the tab. The way this journal goes with this wrap, the tab won't work. Um, and it's an advent calendar anyway. So if there's going to be tab or tabs, it'll be the uh, red journal. So, but that's something to think about in the coming weeks. So I'm pretty sure I showed you this snowflake in a previous video where I just had a go at drawing one with a ruler. And the only thing I did was set myself a couple measurements to make sure that my cross snowflake bars were um, somewhat even and then sort of just started filling it in like you would if you were doodling on a piece of paper. So that went quite well, very happy with that. Then you would have known that I've got a series of snowflakes that my friend crocheted for me using a book that I'd had for a few years. So um, gorgeous that I got about 10, 12 of them and she's still going because she wants to do um, you know, 90% of the patterns and there's 100 in there. So the plan is in the uh, future is Get them ready to hang on my Christmas tree so that's a video another day we'll do that in December but this one here was just a little guy and I had a bit of room here for him I did have a piece of net here and I cro I um, not crocheted I stitched him down and I couldn't see his shape as much because it had white underneath him so I end up having to very carefully cut out the um, the net and replace it with some of the linens which sort of worked out okay because these pieces were in the main piece for snowflake for my advent calendar so I really like how it came out and I like how I've come down on this edge here it sort of just makes it feel a little bit more interesting and then once he was in place with some little stitches I went through and embellished him with the beads so uh, look I've missed a bead uh oh look at that and it's interesting because the other piece the main one I um, embellished with beads as well and it took hours and hours and by the time I finished the other piece the main block and then I'm like oh I still have this one to go I was just like when will this end I think too I was sitting on an uncomfortable couch so it just wasn't coming together easily for me and my back was getting sore and sore I'm gonna stitch that one on there while I see it just get it done so just bear with me as I quickly grab a few supplies then I'll show you the piece inside I just like to know it's done otherwise it just bugs me and if uh, the day rolls on which I believe it will I've got a pest controller guy coming so I think he'll be here at about 11 o'clock and I still haven't finished pulling as much as I can away from walls to sort of allow him to place a bit of a mist in nooks and crannies where all those critters live in nooks and crannies. I don't like spraying too much like, you know, supposed to do it every year, but I don't. It just, ugh, I don't like it. And I, probably my last spray was probably five years ago. I guess if there's any ladies out there that are from the industry, you're probably cringy going, you should be doing this regularly every 12 months. And I probably should. But I'll try and avoid it if I can. And I sort of wait till I start to see the creepy crawlies. It's probably not the right thing to do. But I'm starting to notice those little house spiders everywhere. Daddy long legs are starting to creep in, so they're obviously eating the little house spiders and ants. Ants, ants, ants. And they're probably in the last month, the odd um, dead cockroach has turned up. Disgusting things. And they're in spots like behind your, um, uh, what do you call it, washing machine? There was one in front of the washing machine. So I don't know if he just got lost as he come in from outside or he's got a... Uh, spotty lives in back there or he's just cruising around I don't know what his story was but he needs to be well he's dealt with now so and he was actually 
um, actually dead. So I'm guessing there's still some re residue around from five years ago from my last spray. How did I get onto this topic? Seriously, you guys don't want to hear about cockroaches. Okay, there we go. I've got my little seed bead in there. So there's a little series of seed beads and then the, the bigger ones in the three different colours. And this particular snowflake, I could play a little bit more and I bought the champagne-y sort of colour in to pick up on, um, you know, the little hint of champagne throughout. Okay, so let's open up my piece and let me show you my snowflakes. And then we need to make a number three. So let's have a look. Whoops, it's upside down. That was dramatic drum roll and then it went wrong. So there's the reindeer and of course, number one, number two, the wreath and the little number two and the snowflakes. So there's my piece guys. As I predicted in my first video, I was going to just lay down all of these linens and then just um, boro stitch across everything or ditch stitch or you know running stitch whatever you want to call it depending on what um, country you're from that is my background and then I selected three snowflakes and then embellished them with beads and you can see why it took so long it was just a case of working my way around that snowflake just stitching into place I'm looking up at the TV as I show you, so I'm just waiting to see if I've missed a snowflake bead, but I think I got them all. It was fun to start with, but by the time I got to this third snowflake, I was like, oh, will it ever end? The little string that was left on each one from where Marianne finished the last stitch, um, if the stitch was in the center here, the last stitch and the string was out here, I just sort of wove it behind and then took it straight up and then I just couched it down. So uh, technically hanging snowflakes like from a Christmas tree, more so than snowflakes in the sky. But having said that, the blue in behind sort of reminded me of the night sky and it sort of gave it a something to pop from. So I've got my buttons in place ready to catch the piece that goes on top. And um, just to lift it and jazzy it up a little bit, I end up going through and stitching in some little snippets of the lace as well. And I sort of felt that it sort of blended the background to the snowflakes because they were so glamorous and the background was so neutral that I sort of felt like it needed, you know, a little, little extra something. So now I'm looking for a piece of calico. I thought there might be something pre-torn, which it doesn't seem to be, because I need to do the number three. So let me just make a little bit of space, because it looks like I need to snip and rip some fabric for this section. Okay, so I need it to be a little bit bigger. Or was it? It was the same size, I think. Yeah, it was. I did notice that because there's so so much stitching on that piece that um, it pulled it in quite a lot. So it's actually a little bit smaller than this wreath, for example. So, yeah, that, that was interesting that your piece will cinch in, you know, quite a lot according to, you know, the type of stitching you do. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Just going to snip that. I must show you to a pack of fabric that I purchased from Susanna from um, Vintage Blend Studio. So I got that right. I always get that name wrong. I don't know why. I remember Susanna, I like her first name always seem to stumble on her business name which is silly I've been watching Susanna for many many years and a um, bit of a, a fan of her work because she does all sorts of things too she's um, 
She's not just journals, she's not just slow stitch, she does projects. So if you go back through her channel, she's got heaps and heaps of videos. She'll like take a pattern that might be being uh, made out there in uh, like a, a bit of a community. For example, um, I watched her series, I think it's three, maybe four videos of the Lisa Mattock Christmas house. Now I bought that pattern last year because Rachel from Roxy Creations was doing it. She was sort of featuring it a little bit. And I thought, oh, that looks like fun. So I grabbed it and I haven't done anything with it yet. It's just sitting in the cupboard for a rainy day. You know how it goes when you impulse buy patterns and things. So I was um, going back through some of Susanna's videos. I was sort of, there was no one that I follow posting any videos and I had a couple hours to kill. I was sitting in the car waiting for a, an appointment and I thought, oh, what will I do? So... I went YouTube surfing and I thought, oh, I'll go and check out Susanna's channels because there'd be for sure something there I haven't watched yet. And I found um, these, I'm pretty sure it's four videos, correct me if I'm wrong, um, of her interpretation of that very pattern. And she didn't do Christmas. She just made it into, you know, a generic design little house using vintage fabrics. And it was so cute and she took the pattern in another direction where she reinforced the internal um, structure of the little house by cutting the templates again but using cardboard not a thick cardboard it was just like a, a cereal box cardboard and as she made the house she inserted these um, pieces of cardboard at the very end and then stuffed it i think from memory lisa's pattern when you have your panel, say this is your roof and that's your floor, or you, or you wouldn't be the stitching them together, say it's your roof and a side wall, in Lisa's pattern you'd stitch them on the outside here. So that seam becomes a feature of the little shabby chic or the little slow stitch house, where Susanna had those seams internally, so everything was done inside out, and then she added the uh, cardboard um, in because she was in uncharted territory she had originally put the cardboard on the outside of the house because all of her beautiful embroidery embroidery was inside so she could lay for example the cardboard like that then turn it inside out which didn't actually work because it's a bit of an engineering thing if it's full of cardboard and you're inside out how are you going to flip it without that cardboard coming away so it was quite interesting because it was good to see her nut it all out because it would have probably happened to me as well I wouldn't when you're in uncharted territory and you're reinventing something that's half the fun it's like really it's a real buzz to um, try and work out how you're gonna solve the problem which is probably why I like crafting so much is because we're always encounter these little problems but anyway the long story of it is she um, figured it out and her little house took on a completely different look to the pattern and it was just just as gorgeous and I, I oh, just t took it to another level and I really like that type of um, craftsmanship and you probably notice that's sort of what I do too. I'll get something that is um, mainstream and then look at it and look at it and think about it and think about it. And what can I do to make this A, a challenge for me and B, try and teach myself something new because for sure there'll be something in there that is, you know, uncharted. Like Susanna was putting the um, cardboard in the walls of the little house. You'll have to go and watch it, guys. If you don't know Susanna's channel, I'll link it in the description below. But if you type in Vintage Blend Studio, you'll find it. And it's probably popping up on your feed anyway because she's doing this uh, Roxy Journal of Stitchery um, program as well. So she's probably someone you're watching. But go looking for the little houses um, I think she watches my channel too. So Susanna, when you do an update on your stitchery, can you link the little houses, the videos to those? Because, um, yeah, 
really good. They make you think outside the box. Plus, it's a um, Liz Maddock pattern, which is super cool because she's also in the background for this project by supplying kits of fabric that you can purchase if your stash needs a little top up of Christmassy colors. She's got all sorts of goodies on her website, so definitely worth checking out. Um, so yeah, oh, and I, that's who I got my fabric pack from was Susanna. So that's arrived as well. So it's not a Christmas inspired pack at all. It's just caught my eye. I don't know what I'm gonna use it for, but I plan to do a project around it and sort of see where it goes. Well, well you know, what's in there that inspires me to do what? So um, I'll show you that too, I must, where is it? Okay, I've got it handy here. So I'm gonna put it just there so that by the time I finish this video, I don't forget, you know, where I'm at. Okay, so I've torn a few extra pieces, so I'm ready for the next coming week. And there's my panel that is gonna go on top of my snowflakes. So I'll just move that out of the way like so and get my panel there's my spares for coming weeks so they can just sit in my journal now we need to do a border let's get my little box of tricks here and we need to do a cluster on the front with the number three fabrics a little bit wonky Good quality calico. Oh, there's some pieces torn. I'm gonna use this piece actually. This is, I can see it's pulling in there. That'll be all right to stitch on. Um, but I'm thinking that it could give me problems because it's actually the cover for, um, you know, the number three. So that needs to be pretty true. Alrighty, now I need some scraps too of the background, which I did keep. I did keep some bits and pieces here. So where are they? I need to clean up in here. Don't look. Interesting. And a bit of that lace. Some little scissors. I need to get myself another one of those boxes. These beads are starting to get unruly. I think I say that every video and I just haven't had time to sit down and do it. Okay, there's another scrap. That'd be heaps. And I've got some bits cut already from the previous week. All right, so paisley it is by the looks of it. So the first thing I've got to do is finger press it by folding it in half. This is not very exciting for you because I have to make one every video, but you might just have me playing in the background as I yabber away. Gosh, I've already covered cockroaches already this morning. Alrighty. You know, the first room I lifted everything up and made sure it was ready to go was my craft room. There's my priorities for you. Can't have any nasty things in my craft room i'll have to make sure he does this room maybe get him to do it twice just in case i'm not too worried about everywhere else <laughs> oh that's funny all righty so that's that little section done a couple more pins i've been so busy busy filming different series it's been so much fun I've just finished I finished the Edith Holden one last week so you're all watching that at the moment and the journals that came from that that's a nice long piece I might use that there maybe I'll make this edge very moody dark because the background so yeah, I've um, finished the Edith Holding last week, I think it was. And it's like 
nearly 20 episodes. So it was just an epic, but it was four journals. And one of them was actually a journal for future stitcheries um, would be suitable for this project. Two were using a paper bag and making them into two journals. And then the other one was, um, um, I've just gone blank, a standard sort of journal, like what I would make if I was doing a piece for a gift. So something quite interactive and yeah, full of space for them to play and little hints of things throughout it to help them along their journey on um, learning, you know, how to use a journal. So that was a bit of fun. I might have to cut another piece. Or do I use that paisley, this one? I think I will. Otherwise it'll be too dark and it might look a bit odd because the other pieces don't follow a certain blue. They sort of are mixed up. So Edith is in the can, as they say in Hollywood. The film is finished and it's in the can ready for the editing. Well, I've done that. So that's my professional speak, which just cracks me up. My husband says, you know, what are you up to? And I'm saying, I'm just getting more episodes in the can. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. This YouTube world's just opened up a whole new learning for me from how, how to edit the videos, which I barely do, to be honest. I just hit play on my iPad and just talk. I've got a, a stand that holds it above me, which seems to be working. It does tend to topple if I bump it. So I've got sitting on it now. It's hilarious. You know the walnut shell that you would use if you were making a pin cushion? See, that's another project I haven't done yet. When you were all making that um, long slow stitch cushion for pins, pin cushion, and um, the girls recommended walnut shell to go into it, and there was just none around. I think everyone was ordering it, and it just vanished. And I'd seen it in shops, and I was like, "What? What would that be in a sewing shop for it?" I just never put two and two together. <coughs> So I managed to get some from, um, I think it was a store in Harvey Bay. There was some online, but this was at Harvey Bay. And I thought, oh, I'll order it and then I've got it. And my plan is to make a slow stitch something with it inside for the pins. And the reason it does be, um, the reason it gets used is what I'm trying to say, is as you put your pins in, it sharpens the pins, which I thought was you know, one of those, ah, oh, is that what it's for? I thought it was a weight issue, but it's not. It sharpens your pins. And I think you can pick it up in pet shops too because the reptile industry, the lizards and things, they use it as the substrate in the um, aquarium. They, well, they don't live in aquariums. The tanks, the glass enclosures that are heated for the lizards, um... Yeah, they, they use that as the surface of which the lizard lies on, which I thought was interesting too, because that's not my world at all. So my stand that holds the iPad has a bag of walnut, um, <laughs> walnut shell on it. I just need to cut this, guys, so I need to get my surface out of the way. Just bear with me, I need my measuring ruler and I'm gonna just come off camera a little. Where's my rotary cutter? There it is. And I need to cut this piece in half. It just so works out just perfectly because the, the jelly rolls are pre-cut at two and a half inches so if I cut this at one and a quarter, it's exactly half. So I'm just going to come over to my mat that is to the side of me where I can cut onto that rubber and not um, 
ruin on my blade, which is pretty dodgy to start with. I really need to change my rotary blade. But I should be able to cut it. Oh, it's so blunt. I really need to. Oh, it doesn't even cut anymore. Oh, goodness me, it's blunt. Useless. All it did was crease it. Didn't even... I wonder if I can cut it with scissors. How bodgy is that going to end up looking? Yeah, bodgy. Okay, I bought that. You get the general gist. I'm going to go and buy myself a rotary blade for my um, little apparatus. And then I can cut another piece. I don't think there's one in my bucket from previous weeks. Is there one in there? No. Oh, hang on. What's that? Are they too small? I've got three little bits that are too small. Bugger, 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 bugger. Yeah, no. Nah. Okay. Forget about that. Let's go on to something else because you know what I'm going to do there. I'm just going to whip around with a uh, needle and thread like I did previous weeks and just do a running stitch to secure that into position. So that will happen. Now, the next thing I need to do is um, cut out a number uh, three. So I'm just grabbing my box where I have all of the um, numbers. So if you're doing the advent calendar, you'll all be working on a three, maybe a four, if you are doing an extra couple. Here's my template. An extra couple... Um, panels my grease proof paper so I'm just going to trace my three out so if you're wondering where I got my numbers from I just went to Google and I typed in I wrote it down here number template free and this popped up. I'm going to cut the four out while I'm here in anticipation of the next week's prompt. Oh, I want it be good to have a new rotary blade for that thing. I've been struggling with it for a little while now. And it looks like it's finally, finally gone. Okay. So let's just rough cut. Will I get another digit out of that scrap? Then I can chuck it. Yep. All right. Let's what happened to my pencil. I'm going to do the five as well. And then I can throw in the bin that little piece of paper. Wonder what the next prompt will be. It's all very exciting. I'll use the bigger scissors because I want a fairly straight, it uh, are straight sides on these numbers. Because I've drawn it with a pencil, but I can see that I'm a little bit on the wonky side in those straight lines. So I'll just use a bigger scissors so that I can get a, a more true straight cut. So what have you got planned for the week? This is Monday and for me and you will probably see this tomorrow because I think I've got an Edith Holding video coming out tonight but then again what I might do is if it uploads Quick enough, I will push the Edith Holding episode forward one day and slide this one in. That's what I'll do. This one will come out Monday night. I haven't yet put photos of my pieces on Facebook either, so I need to do that. 
I'll do that tomorrow and then the link will be there. And that there would be easily another number, so I might keep that bit, chuck the rest. I do need to get some blue buttons too. I'm whipping through the blue buttons. When you use four buttons on every panel, I'm soon going to run out of buttons. So that's another little thing on my, if I think of it list and I'm in an establishment that would sell buttons. Rotary cutter or rotary blade buttons that's what i need sounding like a trip to spotlight i'm sure there's something else oh, i've got some shortage on the blue cotton too that i'm using for this particular project it's a um crochet cup crocheting cotton but pearl cotton and it is the number eight so I do a lot of embroidery with that size. And the blue that's going with this project, that's what the snowflakes were stitched in, the words. It's just the one colour I'm using throughout the whole thing. Sort of tie it all together. I'm getting very low. I've done a lot of mileage, especially the stitching down of the background of that snowflake piece. It was just row after row and row and row and row. So I need to get across to my favourite shop at Norman Park. I keep saying Morningside, but it's actually Norman Park. The two suburbs are side by side, so it must be very close to that suburb because I think when it goes into my directional... Um, so what do we need? Three. So let's just pop these in here on the little bull clip. And we need a little panel to do our little piece of embroidery on so that when we attach it, all of the stitching that we do on this is hidden and we're not stitching directly onto the piece that the little edge is around this one here. So I can sort of take that away and do some stitching and then it attaches. So that I need, that I need scraps I don't need, base template I don't need. Okay, so I can get rid of that. Now it's just about clustering together something that sort of pleases my eye. I did consider putting a snowflake on the front of it, but, and I thought, oh, that'll be great. And then I was off on this tangent of, you know, snowflake on front. But I sort of start thinking about the advent calendar and the whole reason for the advent calendar. I just want to open this up and have a look at one of the others just to see how I formed my structure. Okay, so I put down a base of the one colour and then build accordingly. See that? So I'm trying to keep a little bit of uniformity there. Okay, so we need a strip and then we need a digit. And then we go around it with some stitching. So I might actually do that. Mark it out first. Where's my pen? And I just rough eye, come in a little bit and draw a line. That's where I'm going to do my running stitch to frame the piece. So it makes it easy when you're on the first few weeks and you nut out your design elements. And then as this project's rolled on, I can sort of follow a, a pre-existing pre design. So it makes it pretty simple when it comes to, oh, I've, I've used that fabric in number two. Oh, there's something to consider. 
I keep picking up the same fabrics. I'm going to have them, you know, all in a row. Let's have a little look. Number two is that starry spot. And the dark, oh, goodness. I need to mix it up a bit because that would have been the next one I picked up. And, of course, it's a starry spot. Let's use this one. Listen to Bandit. I don't know if you can hear him. He's woofing and playing and he's so excited. Excited to be alive is what that puppy dog is. So I'm just cutting now a piece that's suitable. Oh, he's a noisy boy today. Pepper would be running around him with something in her mouth. And um, he's chasing her. I'm getting very excited about it all. That sort of looks like a snow flurry in my eyes. It probably doesn't to you guys. You're thinking, oh, what's she talking about? So then we put this number three in position. We need it to pop. So let's pick something pale. We haven't used this one before. Hello, Bandit. He's at the window looking at me. So I just need to now trace around my three. Cut it out. Stitch it down. Add a few more decorative elements. Using the scraps from the piece that'll sit underneath is all those gorgeous linens. Gee, they were nice to stitch through. Really nice. Made a change from this fabric. This fabric's new. So it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't have that same tactile feeling that linen has and some of the older cottons and that that we pick up that have a bit more of, I don't know, they sort of feel like they've been loved. Does that make sense? Okay. So now I've just got to fussy cut out my little number three. And then I just do a running stitch through the centre of the three. To pin it down into position. This is all repeat, repeat from previous number ones and number two pages. So by the end of it, you'll be probably going, oh, she's doing, doing the number. I know what she's doing there. Some of them I might just go ahead and do. I don't want to waste your time, but then I guess we're in our craft rooms. We have time to waste. This is our time-wasting department. Someone's texting me. I'm concentrating on getting my number three looking like a number three. There we go. That was a bit tricky. It's no number one. Okay, so that will just sit like so. I can position that little guy. And then it's just a case of what scraps do we have? How do we lay them down so that it looks interesting and is a hint of what may be revealed underneath? That's all this is about. It's like a little snippet, a cluster. So I try not to overthink it too much. 
probably put a little bit of that on too. Yeah, let's do that. Because that appears. <clears throat> be fun un unraveling these, you know, well, not unraveling, but opening them up at Christmas. It'll be really good. I think I'm going to thoroughly enjoy revisiting this project in the years to come as it comes out of my Christmas box of goodies. Where's my pins? Pins, pins. So that little three will sit there. I'm happy with its location. I will need to create my buttonholes so that this piece can be attached as well. There we go. Just simple, just a hint of bits left. What's that there? There's another piece. Maybe I can tuck that in there. Yep, and then that there. There we go. Looking at that, you would not think snowflakes were the next thing to be revealed. So that's good. I will. I will see those little bits of linen there and go, oh, yes, I know what's coming. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so there will be um, a running stitch come down and through the three as a bit of a highlight treatment. And that's using the blue that I need to buy more of that is right through the whole project. There is then um, a running stitch that will go around the inside edge of everything as well. So that looks really good. I need to put my little three away. Not that I have a need for it, I don't think, because I'm not going to do 13. But I'll hang on to it because I might end up putting these templates in an envelope with this piece. And then if I ever do something that needs numbers, I have it. But you know how we go. That's just more stuff in our room and we probably don't need to keep it. <clears throat> okay, so that now, let me just clear. Oh, I haven't used that bit. It's probably a bit dark. Yeah, it's a bit dark and it's not going to pop on that. So we won't use that this time. I'll pop that away in my little box of tricks. I don't need the pen. So where's my back piece? So that will then attach to there. Which then will go... Oh, then I need to do my buttonholes. So, so we might as well mark them out while we're fiddling. So I just lift the panel on top of my piece my buttons are stitched in so I just make sure everything is lined up and even and then using my fingers I just feel around until I find the button there it is there you can see it through the fabric and then I'm just drawing a red line over the button one side to the other and that then tells me where it is underneath and I can then create a buttonhole to suit and I'm hand making the buttonholes which is just cutting a little slit and then stitching like a buttonhole would be done on a sewing machine stitching um, that's a big button that's going to tuck in over there but that's all good Unless I move it in, might end up moving that button across a little bit. So it's just a case of a little snip and then stitch around all of the edges from that snip to create a bit of structure around there and it doesn't fray apart and it's just doing the overcast stitch to make it all nice. Okay, so that's as far as I can go at this stage because I do need to... Um, get some more thread, a rotary cutter, etc, etc. So at the end of this video, 
I will place um, some photos because I'll probably duck out and do that little chore. Go to Spotlight and sort that out because I don't want to hold this up. And um, yeah, so you will see a photo at the end of the video of this completed and hopefully I'll get it up and on YouTube for you. There we go. So there's the snowflakes. Number three, advent calendar bunting, done, sorted. Now, before we go, I just wanna show you my little pack of goodies that arrived from Susanna. And I also bought a pattern kit. This is the pattern kit. Now, it's a heart that you make, um, stuff it and embroider the piece of um, fabric that she's provided with it, which is this uh, photo here, which is the ideas. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not going to probably use it for that. I just spotted this fabric and thought, wow, how gorgeous is that? So I don't know what I'll end up using this for. I just loved the fabric and it was worth buying the pattern just to get that. So that'll be a project for a rainy day. Now, she also provided some backing fabric with that kit. And then this little kit is, um, oh, look at this postcard. Isn't it gorgeous? This little kit with lots of goodies in it. So just quickly show you if you're wanting a bit of a top up. Look at that. That's part of that family just that there and these are sort of colors I don't tend towards like if I'm in a quilt shop buying scraps of fabrics I, I wouldn't buy oh there's an there's another piece of it like seriously oh boy oh boy I probably wouldn't buy these brights so when I see a kit with a bit of them in I grab it because it's not something I tend to go towards, but I probably need to force myself to do such things. So there's all sorts of fabrics in here. Just lovely. All sorts of textures. And the, you know, if you were in a quilt shop, you wouldn't buy a pack of, a, a meter of that or 30 centimeters of it at least. So these packs are just fantastic to get some different colors, and especially if you pick some packs that you would not normally tend towards. Look at this, gingham. She used gingham on that little house. The whole roof was gingham that had um, she then stitched. Remember doing this as a kid at school? We'd learn cross stitch, and they'd give us a piece of this, and we'd be doing cross stitches till the cows come home. Oh, just like random pieces that I would never, never really have in my stash. Plus they're vintage too. So I don't mind grabbing some packs like this and some quilt as well, which is also not the easiest thing to come by <clears throat> and gorgeous colors. And there's a piece of fabric there at the back, which is probably more my colors. If I, to be honest, if I pull open my fabric drawers, this undertone here, this olive, and the sort of tones like that <clears throat> are featured. So to have some girly girly prints sort of um, fills a little hole in my stash. So if you are looking at getting some fabric to top up your stash, type into Etsy um you know fabric packs vintage fabric packs there's not a lot of antique fabric packs out there you get that from rachel but vintage definitely vintage is anything that's 100 years or less so things from the 50s and 60s and things like that and antique is 100 years or more i'm going to rearrange this a little bit so i see those pieces on top because they are going to be a project one day. Isn't that pretty, that little trim? 
That's so unusual. I think I have seen that around in um, for sale and I just haven't bought it because I was like not really into slow stitch and I'm like, what would I do with it? But, and all I need is just that. We don't need half a metre or 30 centimetres is often the minimum. So to have these packs with a sprinkling of um, other things is uh yeah a really good idea now i also got um one of let me get this in without no i'm not even going to struggle i will do that off camera because that would be embarrassing i also had arrived my pack from um oh i've gone blank sarah goodness me sorry sarah sarah's pack arrived as well I may have shown you this in a previous video because they were sort of, this one I've had for a couple of weeks. So it's got a collection of um, treasures as well. Really different. Some really old, old things in here and all blues. Um, these aren't really the blues I'm working with. Like actually that, that could be. That one there where she's dyed the fabrics. But I want to keep the pack in its entirety. Because I think I've got enough bits and pieces to do my panel without bringing in even more. She's got indigo dyed fabric. Yeah. Those, some of those look like Liberty fabrics. I don't know if they are, but they sort of remind me of Liberty fabrics. Yeah, beautiful. So this is a, a blue and I've got this pastel one and I'm not going to use them well Sarah's anyway I'm not going to use them in this project because like I said I've got a theme happening and it's really just going to send me off on another tangent no I'm bad enough with my tangents but what I'll do is I will probably create a journal of stitchery book that would suit this and I'll do one that suits this and then these packs will stay with that journal. So whenever I feel like doing a bit of stitching, I'll have, you know, a bit of a theme running through and these packs will sort of get me going and inspire me to do something within them. So another video, another day. But that's what I'm thinking of doing with these two, these two packs. Every other pack I've got are more generic-y fabrics, like it might be a pack of hemp or a pack of linen or a pack of... So they're sort of my substrates, my bases, everything you'd put down first. These type of packs is just, you know, a snippets of a colour theme or style. And the, the fact that the girls give you bits and pieces in the pack is just a bonus because you can literally grab that, go on holidays and away you go. Even though Susanna doesn't have as many things like that. But if you were on holidays then you could go on a treasure hunt through all of the op shops and the local craft stores and fabric stores and put together a pack to suit this particular style, which would be a lot of fun because it would bring new elements into your uh, craft room. So that's the theory with that. So I'll just pop them out of my way and that I think is that. I've got some homework to do to finish this. And then it can be used to cover my snowflake panel. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me. And um, if you see a photo of that at the end of this video, you know all went to plan and I got out of the house and grabbed some supplies. So I will uh, see you all in the next video, which I believe will be a Edith holding tomorrow because it's pre-recorded. And I've just finished a, a new series, which is using a journal that I purchased that has fallen apart and I pull it apart and I make it into a series of new things for my craft room. And it's a journal and some ephemera holding folders and all sorts of things come from that elements from that journal that broke down on me. So um, that is going to be a Timothy Holtz and also the kit I've chosen for that project is a uh, one from Tracy. So Love Junk Journals and it's the Scrap Fabric uh, Kit. 
which is just gorgeous. So I've been admiring it for a little while and I went and purchased it and I've got the journal pages, the ephemera that goes with it and the labels that go with it. And I've applied it to this journal that has broken down. So I've just finished filming 10 part series on that and it's, oh, you wait till you see what I do on that. But that will go to air when the Edith Holden series is finished. And I think Edith, let's just have a little look. The Edith Holden series I know is 20 videos and number 10 went up. So there you go. Number 10 went out last night. So there's still 10 more episodes to go on the Edith series. And then the Tim Holt series will kick in. And in amongst it will be journalist stitchery. So I'll sort of push the videos along and slide in one of these, which is, you know, current. So that's how it's going to roll for the next couple months. And um, I think the next series, I, I'm just not sure what I'm going to do. I've got um, um, the designer from the UK, William Morris. I have a pile of William Morris fabrics and kits that suit that. And I'm really itching to do something there. But I've sort of got another little project that's burning a hole in the back of my head that I think I need to get out and filmed and then I can relax into William Morris. Before we know it, it's going to be Christmas. Christmas, Christmas. Anyway, I'm gabbing on here. I will leave you all in peace and um, enjoy your day. Enjoy your stitching. And yay, it's Wednesday coming soon and we get to have a new prompt. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, thanks ladies, thanks girls, Rachel, Juju and um, Sarah. Oh, that stitching that Juju's doing. Did anyone catch that at the end of Sarah's video? She had some of um, Judy's pieces that she's been working on. They met at a shopping centre and her mum brought them along and Sarah made a quick little video and popped it on the end of, I think, the last video. So if you haven't seen it, go find it. If you have missed it, Please, please go find it because she is one talented girl. All right, that's it. I'm gone. Got to go and buy a rotary cutter blade. Bye for now.